Thank you very much, everyone. So yes, we are Team Fit, that composes of Tom, Harpel, Isabel, and myself. And we built a augmented reality gardening app called Garden. I will save it until the questions, if you have any questions how we came up with that name, because <laughs> it is quite intense. And so essentially, it's an augmented reality app, and it allows the user to design the garden using um, placing 3D objects into the garden in real time to allow them to visualize exactly what they are doing to the garden. It's aimed at novices, so there is technology out there for kind of ag um, architectural designs like landscaping, but this is basically, I want to plonk something in there. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, let's put it in. Um, yeah, so let's do a quick run through of how the app looks for user and how it navigates. So opening the app, you can see it opens up a login screen, so if you haven't got a login, feel free to register. Um, so registering for the app allows us to take your um, past um, garden designs and all your um, tabulated plants. Um, so it works best in landscape mode, hence why it's a switch to landscape. You can select through all your um, menu items, all your plants, and find out if it's the right fit for your garden based on botanical information. And just a simple press of the plus should bring it in. There we go. So that's a nice hazel tree on some suspicious looking grass. Um, so just, um, they're easy to, uh, it's quite intuitive. You just drag and drop, place it where you want. As you see, it was trying to find the plane, found the plane, it was happy, and it's kind of anchored in there. That little red X you can see up there um, is just a, a 3D button. So you click the button. Um, if you decide that you didn't like the lavender, it looks a bit rubbish, you can just delete it whenever you want. We also have a like reset all, the dustbin, reset all just clears all the bit plants you don't want. Um, also the screenshot button. So the screenshot button allows you to take a screenshot, it will save it locally to your phone, into your photos. With that you can do what you want with, um, post it on the internet, post it on Instagram, post it to your mum, whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> um, so once we go back into your app, um, you can see um, I think this is going to move around a little bit, kind of show that it is a 3D object. You can kind of like move around and it's not going to move. Um, you can also save your objects, like we said before, so this is going to clear it all. Um, you save your objects, you go back into your wish list, and it's going to create a, tab a table of what objects you've put in there. So you can go to the garden center, and I'll send someone you don't like to the garden center, and um, you can say, this is, these are the plants I want for my garden, and underneath, which I just missed out, was a um, list of garden centers near you using the GPS of the phone. So it kind of cuts it all out for you. So that's kind of roughly the app in a nutshell. I will pass it on to Isabel, who will talk about the tech stack we used. Thank you very much. Hi, so I'm going to give um, you an overview of the tech stack that we use for this, um, and then go into a bit more detail about our motivations um, for the, the choices with, that we actually made for the tech stack. So to create the actual mobile application itself, we used React Native, and then to to, to create and achieve the AR aspects, we used Vira Media, which you can see at the bottom there. Um, for the more back endy aspects of the app, so the, the database, the authentication, we used Google's uh, Cloud, Firestore, and Firebase. Um, we'll talk about it slightly later, but those four are all completely new to us. They, we didn't touch them on them in the course at all, so it was a massive learning curve in that way. Um, we've also used Node.js throughout the app, and then the Jest testing suite to do test-driven development on any utils, functions, um, things like that. So in terms of the motivations for the front-end aspects of the app, so in terms of choosing React Native and Viro, they really um, came hand in hand together for us, really. So we knew that React Native was really up to date with the new kind of AR platforms that are out there already. So we'd be able to kind of use the docs that are already there to, to just integrate it into the app with both Viro Media and React Native. So that seemed like a really obvious choice for us. And then we found Vira Media really useful because as we were learning React Native from scratch, a lot of the naming conventions are really similar in Viro as well. So where you'd have a text component in React Native, it'd be Viro text in Vira Media. So that was really useful to kind of have them both working alongside each other. Um, that said, they were completely new to us and we'd never touched any AR before. It's a new technology kind of in general, as well as just being for us. So it was really exciting to kind of uh, just learn more about these, these new applications and actually use it to create what I think is a pretty cool, cool app. I'm going to pass you on to Tom, who's going to talk about the back end.
Okay there. Hi there, everyone. Um, it was nice to work on the front end and the back end during this application, and we all had the chance to do that, which was great. I spent most of my time working with Firebase in the end. Um, <clears throat> so, sorry, just give me a moment. Uh, so yeah, we, we thought about making an express API for quite a while, but in the end we realized that we didn't need to do that really. Like Firebase might be the better option because it would do most of the heavy lifting on the back end. So that was the, the route uh, we chose to go for. Uh, creating an express API would have meant we'd, like, we would have done that if we'd had a lot of endpoints to deal with and um, a more complicated data set, but we didn't really have that. So we chose to go with Firebase in the end. Um, the Firebase documentation was actually really good. There were lots of clear examples and code snippets to follow. So we uh, read through that a lot beforehand and that really helps us move forward quickly. Uh, Firebase does offer a range of different services and we chose to use the authentication services, database services and the storage services in the end. Um, yeah, the authentication service was quite easy to set up. It basically stored all our users' credentials for us um, and that worked in harmony with the Firebase database that we used. You could basically set up rules on the database so that only authenticated users could access those particular document sets. Um, yeah, we chose to use Firestore in the end, which is the newest type of database on offer. Um, this was better than its predecessors from a point of view that it allowed for, it was more scalable, it allowed for shallow querying and also more complex querying than some of its predecessors. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the agile processes we used as well. Uh, so we had regular stand-ups uh, throughout the project and that helped us stay on track for the most part, avoid any sort of confusion. Uh, we tried to pair up as much as possible and that really helped with quick problem solving and avoiding syntax errors. Um, also, we had a very positive experience with GitHub for the most part. Um, we set that up in the way that we were taught here at North Coders with their dev branch and also the master branch, obviously. And we set that up with rules so that you could only change things on those branches if you were authorized to do so by other members of your team. Uh, we made sure when we were starting a new sprint um, to do something on our project uh, that we always yeah, started a new branch and committed regularly and um, with clear commit messages as well so everyone knew exactly what was going on. Um, yeah, we also, whenever we made pull requests, uh, we would always make sure to communicate about those. And whenever starting a new branch, we'd always make sure to pull down the latest code from the dev branch to avoid those horrible merge conflicts that people run into from time to time. And we didn't have too many of those, luckily. So, so that was great. Uh, and I'll pass you on to Harpal. He'll tell you more about the challenges. Thanks. Hi, um, I'm just going to tell you about the challenges we faced and how we overcame them. So, um, yeah, the first challenge was phone compatibility. So with Vera Media, um, although it's cross-platform, only certain Android devices are supported. Um, it has to have AR Core, um, but um, half of the team didn't have that. So um, we had to think of a way around that. So we uh, used paired programming and split uh, the teams up so that one of us had a, an iPhone uh, to test with and um, paired up accordingly. So that worked out okay in the end. Um, and then the next uh, challenge we had was with the Vero test bed. Um, this is like exposed test, test bed. Um, and um, basically um, it, it struggled to allow us to import um, third part, some third party um, node modules. So. Um, Luckily for, not, for us, um, it didn't really affect us too much like with our MVP, but um, going forward, we would uh, use Xcode and try to build the app natively um, so we can get those features working, such as maps um, for the showing your markers on the garden, uh, for, for the garden stores, and also... Um, um, yeah, sorry, and also the the file sto storage or yeah, the file storage uh, modules, so you can uh, cache the the images as you can see, like on the right hand side of the the um, the right hand side of the uh, navigation. Um, it would pull in the plant images. We could have cached that, so it would save API requests. 
Um, so that would that would be what we would do going forward. Um, and then the next thing was um, mass massive plants. Um, you'll see. Well, yeah, when we first started, we <laughs> we experienced like massive plants and miniature plants. Um, basically, <laughs> basically each plant that we brought in had um, we we needed to define its scale. So. Um, we had to modify our database to have a scale parameter, and um, we then pulled that down. Uh, so we modified the code accordingly and, and got that working. Um, so as you can see, that's no longer in, in, the, in the, our latest dev branch. Um, now I'm going to pass you back to Izzy, who will talk about what we've learned. Thanks. So we've learned um, a lot over this project. Um, we've learned mainly kind of the, the four big platforms that we started using from scratch to this project. Um, and I think that there's a lot of things that if we could tell our two weeks ago selves, um, we would, and it would uh, help a lot of things. Um, so some of those are um, the importance of the database structure itself. So we had never used Firebase before, and we made the decision to create some of our uh, kind of our database information quite nested and that meant eventually you ended up doing a, getting a lot more data back than you actually needed so without it ever actually ruining the functioning of the app it does mean that for the user you're kind of using a lot more data than you need to so for user experience we'd really like to improve that if we were to carry this on for like into production basically um we'd also really like to as harpal mentioned we'd um really like to have l perhaps looked at the compatibility of the Viro testbed slightly more in advance so that we could kind of be aware of which features we'd have to adapt. So it, it was a bit of a pain and we kind of spent a long time trialing things which we eventually realized wouldn't ever have worked. But I'm, I'm really proud of the kind of uh, the workarounds that we, we figured out in order to actually implement the features that we wanted. Um, without actually any detriment to the app at all. But that is something that will probably would have saved us quite a lot of time. Um, and then the last two are mainly kind of just the importance of checking in with the, the minimum viable product that we had planned out at the beginning. Um, this is something we actually did really well. And I think it really, it, our, our app really thrived because of it. So we we're always checking in that all the main points we were hitting. And then in the last few days, we realized we'd actually surpassed the MVP. So we added a few more features, which is a really great position to be in. Um, and then finally, um, just how important version control is. Um, it's very, very important. Everyone use it. I'm sure most people here know. But um, yeah, it helped us in a lot of situations. We didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of problems, but that was mainly because we were so on it and would not recommend and more, basically. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave you with some images of some beautiful gardens that we created with our app. <laughs> um, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>